Hello, this PowerPoint video is an introduction to the roadside geology of the southern Sierra Nevada and Tehachapi Mountains of California. This video was prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 2018 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org. Pictured is a false color satellite image of central and southern California. The Sierra Nevada Mountains are the backbone of California. The Tehachapi Mountains are the southern extension of the Sierra Nevada. These mountains separate desert-like provinces of California and Nevada to the east from the San Joaquin Valley, also known as Great Valley, to the west. This presentation highlights roadside features within the red box. North of the box, the mountains have a northwest-southeast orientation, but within the box, mountain orientation is north-south. Tension within the Earth's crust is responsible for rotating the mountains clockwise. Nearly all of the photos in this presentation were taken from either Highway 58 or Highway 178, major roads that pass through Kern County, California. Once again, you see the red box. You can see the location of these roads and geologic faults within the red box. Later in this presentation, numbered yellow ovals will designate exact locations for photographed geologic features. The next two slides provide geologic introduction. Types and ages of Sierra Tehachapi rock are listed in the colored boxes to the left. Geologists use color to signify the age and type of rock at the Earth's surface. On the map, the dominant pink color represents the 80 to 110 million year old granite type rock of today's mountains. Since granite forms miles beneath the Earth's surface, geologists think these mountains have been uplifted and eroded for millions of years. However, other surface rocks colored green, red, orange, and purple have a different history. Ribbons of dark green rock represent old roof pendant metamorphic rock. Clusters of relatively young volcanic rock near Tehachapi are bright red, purple, and orange. So how did these mountains form? Pictured is a schematic cross section that shows collision and subduction of plates of the Earth's crust that led to the formation of the Sierra Nevada. This collision caused rock to melt tens of miles beneath the Earth's surface. Magma, the melted rock, sometimes reemerged at the surface as lava from volcanoes. But most magma cooled underground to form bodies of plutonic rock. The volcanoes have mostly eroded away, and we are left with granitic plutons at the Earth's surface. The plutons are colored pink on the cross section and form the backbone of the Sierra Nevada and Tehachapi Mountains. This zoom in of the previously shown geologic map shows yellow ovals. The ovals represent features mostly in the Kern River Canyon that will be shown on the next several slides. This photo, taken off Highway 178 near Bakersfield, shows the shaded V-shaped terminus of the Kern River Canyon. The canyon formed as the Sierra Nevada mountains rose. Gravity and water attempted to erode the mountains as fast as they rose. The canyon abruptly ends where the river crosses the Kern Gorge Fault. This fault is represented by the red dashed line. Faults are planes of weakness where one large block of rock breaks and moves up, down, or laterally relative to another large block of rock. Here, upthrown block rocks of the mountains have risen thousands of feet over millions of years relative to the downthrown block of the San Joaquin Valley. This photo shows the Kern River Canyon that you saw on the previous slide. The steep walled canyon exposes Sierra Nevada granite type rocks as water carries sediment away from the mountains. Throughout the lower Kern River Canyon along Highway 178, you will see rock outcrops such as these. The photo on the left shows joints, fractures, and granite. On the right is an abandoned river channel terrace. 
prospectors of the 1850s California gold rush found placer gold in joint crevices and abandoned river channels. Gold, seven times heavier than average rock, is hydraulically trapped in such locations. In addition to valuable gold, tiny crystals of other minerals can be found in Kern River Canyon sediments. Pictured is a bright red crystal of almondine, a type of garnet likely eroded from granite. Two formation names for granite type rocks of the Sierra are the Mount Adelaide Granodiorite and Bear Valley Tonalite. Don't worry about the fancy names, just call them granite. Sierra granite appears unremarkable. The Bear Valley Tonalite often contains blotches of dark gray rock with an otherwise light colored granite. These bodies are known as xenoliths. The word xenolith simply means strange rock or foreign rock. Xenoliths solidified earlier than other rock in the magmatic pod. They look strange or foreign relative to that rock that solidified later around them. You might see that the black, gray, and white dots within the xenolith are smaller. A xenolith's darker color is due to more iron and magnesium minerals and a smaller grain size. Another feature seen along Highway 178 road cuts are aplite dikes. These plains of quartz and feldspar rich rock intruded the granite. Aplite dikes don't contain darker iron and magnesium minerals that the surrounding granite does. In the photo on the left, dissolved rusted iron has stained a light colored aplite dike orange. The iron came from adjacent rock. In the photo on the right, multiple parallel dikes outcrop. These two photos show contacts between aplite dikes and granite. On the left, you can see two small white dikes being cut by a small fault, which is highlighted red. On Highway 178, a few miles downriver from Lake Isabella is a most unusual outcrop. A dark vertical dike can be seen cutting a Mount Adelaide Granodiorite road cut. This is known as a Lamprophyr dike. Lamprophyrs are rich in elements more common to the Earth's mantle than the crust, such as iron and magnesium. Contrast this dark colored dike with the previously seen light colored aplite dikes. A graphic on the left shows the relationship of the Earth's crust, mantle, and core. The next few slides have to do with features 9, 10, and 11 around Lake Isabella. Lake Isabella, shown on the map as Isabella Reservoir, formed after the Kern River was dammed in 1952. In the midst of abundant granite-type rocks of the Southern Sierra, bands of metamorphic rocks like slate, schist, marble, and phyllite occur around Lake Isabella. These rocks, colored green on the map, are known as roof pendants. The roof pendants existed as sediments above the granite plutons, but were metamorphosed by heat and pressure from rising magma bodies. Sierra Nevada roof pendants today exist mostly next to faults. The photo shows the scar of an abandoned marble quarry on a ridge bounded by the Cook Peak Fault. This marble, mostly white and tan, is metamorphosed limestone. Its age prior to metamorphic recrystallization is uncertain, but has been speculated to be Jurassic or Triassic, between 144 and 254 million years old. The aerial photo on the left is a great example of how rock type influences vegetation. It shows a resistant rock ridge that extends into Lake Isabella at the bottom of the picture. At the top of the photo, you'll see the land on the left is dark green, while on the right it is brown. This is because the Kern Canyon Fault, highlighted red, causes multiple rock types to abut each other. The land on the upper left is underlain by gabbro, a nutrient-rich rock that holds moisture well, while the land on the right is underlain by granodiorite and quartzite, relatively nutrient-poor rocks that don't hold water. The better soil has more vegetation, while the nutrient-poor rock has only grasses growing on it. 
on the geologic map on the right, nutrient-rich gabbro is green, while the nutrient-poor rock is mostly pink. Yes, other things can influence vegetation, like sun angle, temperature, and human influences. But here, the rocks make the difference. In this older photo taken during a setting sun, vivid orange-red rocks in the foothills above Lake Isabella contrast with higher elevation granitic rocks behind them. The color contrast highlights roof pendant metamorphic rocks close to shore versus igneous plutonic rocks in the high mountains. These metamorphic rocks, mostly phyllite and schist, are rich in oxidized iron, yielding the orange-red color. Some rock hounds search road cuts along Sierra Way for garnet crystals. Feature 12 is next to Sierra Way, north of Kernville and Lake Isabella, where springs lie next to the Kern Canyon Fault. A carbonate known as travertine forms within the freshwater springs. Picture it as a slimy mess of algae and spring water dripping off travertine. The rock has the appearance of fluted cones, not unlike cone-shaped deposits in caves, where the method forming stalactites and stalagmites is similar. For the next few features, we leave the Lake Isabella area and jump south to Highway 58, a major road through the Sierra and Tehachapi Mountains. Feature 13, the White Wolf Fault, is not easy to see, but a large earthquake, magnitude 7.3 to 7.5, ruptured this fault in 1952. The earthquake affected much of central and southern California. The epicenter of the 1952 earthquake the place beneath which the earthquake started was about 35 miles south of Bakersfield. On this map, it is marked by the red and yellow dot on the lower left. The epicenter was very close to where today's Highway 99 and Interstate 5 meet. The quake devastated Arvin and Tehachapi and, to a lesser extent, Bakersfield. Areas southeast of the fault, colored green, rose, while areas northwest of the fault, colored red, fell. Because mountainous areas rose and the valley fell, you can see why after thousands of years of earthquakes, California landforms look like they do. Little evidence of the quake is seen today, but the next two photos show 1952 results. Mole tracks, irregular land breaks resulting from the earthquake's ground motion, can be seen in the upper photo. As the red arrows show, lateral ground motion occurred as well as up and down movement. The lower photo shows a post-earthquake picture inside one of the railroad tunnels near the White Wolf Fault. This photo suggests earthquake waves lifted the tunnel wall, shoved one set of rail underneath the wall, then moved the tunnel wall back onto the relocated rail. Post-quake, multiple railroad tunnels had to be destroyed, daylighted, when the train route was repaired. This photo, taken looking southwest on a foggy overcast day, shows the White Wolf Fault lies at the foot of Bear Mountain, near the intersection of Highway 58 and Highway 223. This intersection is near the recently constructed Bakersfield National Cemetery. On the geologic map, you'll see the next four features are visible by traveling Highway 58 through the Tehachapi Valley. Tehachapi Valley is shaded yellow between Tehachapi and Mojave. West of Tehachapi, the road cut pictured looks completely different from all the others. This road cut was made through poorly consolidated pyroclastic rock of the Kinnick Formation. You see white, tan, and gray layers of rock that flowed from the Paiute Mountain or Cache Peak volcanic complex when it was active 17 to 18 million years ago. If you were anywhere near the clouds of hot, gassy volcanic flows that deposited this rock, you would have been terrified. The vertical rills in the road cut suggest this volcanic rock never cemented well and is eroding quickly. In keeping with the terror of being near volcanoes, the next photo shows a mountain at Sand Canyon, northeast of Tehachapi. The mountain is composed of rhyolitic and andesitic lavas and similar volcanic rocks. 
Imagine 15 to 20 million years ago that the area looked like and was just as explosive as Mount St. Helens, Washington. Pictures of Mount St. Helens before and after the massive 1981 eruption are shown at top. But these Sierra and Tehachapi Mountains are no longer in danger of eruption. Feature 18 shows the massive monolith marble and limestone quarry close to Tehachapi. These carbonate rocks are metamorphic roof pendant rocks like those previously shown near Lake Isabella. The older portion of the quarry pictured supplied the raw material to make cement for construction of the 215 mile long Owens Valley Los Angeles Aqueduct. The aqueduct gave Los Angeles a stable source of water in the early 1900s and is still used today. The 1913 photo on the left shows people lining the aqueduct in celebration of water coming into the Los Angeles basin. Carbonate rock is still mined at Monolith today. Cameron Canyon, adjacent to Highway 58, can be seen in this photo. A satellite view inset of the canyon is in the upper left. Feature 19 is the trace of the northeast-southwest oriented Garlock Fault through Cameron Canyon. This left lateral strike slip fault is noted by a single red dashed line. However, the fault is a zone hundreds of yards wide. The Garlock Fault can be followed for 160 miles into the Mojave Desert. It is an active fault, slipping a few millimeters a year, and is considered to have large earthquake potential. However, no large earthquake is thought to have occurred on the Garlock Fault in several hundred years. Thank you for viewing this video, and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science in Bakersfield, California, or visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org.